everyone. In this video I'm going to show you how I'm going to completely restore my brake calipers. These are the calipers completely cleaned and split and uh, I'm going to show you some pictures how they looked when I took them off the car and uh, how I cleaned them. I just started off by wire brushing them lightly then putting them in uh, a vinegar solution and uh, letting it soak and then brushing it off. Um, it took some time but they look a million times better than they did before. Um, before I was able to split these I had to get the pistons out because uh, they were seized in the pores and I used a greased gun just uh, to put grease in there and it pushed the pistons out. This is what the pistons look like and um, they have quite a bit of corrosion on there so these are scrap and we cannot use them. We're going to start off by cleaning these on the inside because there's still a little bit of grease left and uh, this grease is not compatible with brake fluid so we need to get this out. We're also going to take um, the small rubber seal out that's in the center and uh, the way to do it is just take a small screwdriver try to go around there it is do one more So we're going to start off by cleaning the inside with some brake cleaner and some solvents and using some compressed air um, to blow through all the passages and then we're going to decrease the outside again and then we can paint this. So these are the caliper halves after they've completely been cleaned all the dirt has been blown out. I've polished the pores with a, a small wire brush like this. Uh, this is brass and on a Dremel. Now I've taped off all of the parts that can be painted because these are the contact surfaces between the halves. Now it's time uh, to paint these. So this is uh, POR15 heat resistant paint. This is the aluminium color. The caliper halves have been completely painted, uh, I've put on two coats and now they need to be baked in the oven before the paint truly hardens. But before we're going to bake them, we're going to take off all the masking tape and uh, clean them off a little bit because afterwards the paint will get really hard. Unfortunately, uh, I have some proof that some things don't go to plan. Um, these are the caliper halves uh, after they've been in the oven for half an hour at a, uh, 150 degrees centigrade and uh, I'm not sure if you can see this but uh, the paint has bubbled a little bit there was a, a really smooth nice finish when I put them in and as you can see a lot of bubbles here as well on this side this part's the worst and um, I've googled a little bit and I found someone who had the same problem and uh, he had to sand the bubbles off and repaint everything. But um, before we're going to do something drastic like that, we're going to try and um, smooth out the bubbles. Because uh, I have tried on some parts, like here, there were really big bubbles, and um, I've been able to flatten them and they appear to have stayed like this, so um, I'm going to try and rub the bubbles flat and uh, let's see if this holds. If not, I'm going to uh, sand off the bubbles and repaint everything. I've managed to clean them up quite a bit. Um, the bubbles have stayed away and uh, I've removed the excess paint by drilling out all of the holes, tapping all the threads again and uh, they look pretty okay. So I'm only going to show you how to do one half of the caliper and uh, the other half is just the same, then we'll mount these together. Uh, I had quite a lot of problems with the first caliper that I did and uh, I'll explain what the problems were when I uh, get to that point. 
So I polished the bores with a, a brass wire brush on a Dremel, like this. And uh, I polished this on a low speed, and the bores look quite nice. What we're going to do next is we're going to lubricate everything, and we're going to use this spray grease. It's a silicone based grease that's compatible with brake fluid. Um, you can use uh, Gastrol Red Rubber Grease, uh, it's just the same, but you do not want to use any petroleum based grease. So the first thing we do is we take some grease and we want to completely cover the inside of the caliper. And the reason to do this, especially in our case, is because these calipers um, won't be used in the near future so we want to cover everything in grease so that uh, it won't rust we also want to put some grease inside uh, the little groove where the seal will go like that then we'll take this new seal it needs to go in the groove, but we're going to grease this as well. So I'll just put it in. Now, I'm going to show you this. This is a stainless steel brake piston, and um, you might remember how the original ones looked. This is truly a work of art. These won't rust, they're really, really nice, and um, it's a very good upgrade to do. We want to grease this piston as well. This one obviously won't rust, but you need the lubrication to get the piston inside of the caliper. This is uh, much easier when the calipers are split. So now take the piston you have to push it down square so it won't bind. There you go. Next up is the most difficult part, and that's getting the dust boot on here. First you want to put this little lip inside of the groove on the piston. Like this. I want to make sure that it's seated all around. And then what I found is press the piston down so that you can put the outside of the boot onto the lip of the caliper and then to try to get all the grease off the dust boot. Now we need to fit this. This little ring goes on the outside of the dust boot and it clamps the dust boot around the little uh, rise on the caliper. This is um, the most difficult part. Okay, so it's on. And you want to make sure that it stays on. So this is the same thing that you need to do on the other side. On this side there's something more. There's this little... rubber 
power seal that seals the caliper halves together. Now in the manual it says that you are not uh, supposed to split the calipers and there are a couple of reasons why. This is one of them. You need to replace this rubber seal if you split these and they're not as easy to find uh, in the US. You can get them from uh, Pegasus Racing and um, in Europe you can get them from uh, Anglo Parts and uh, I'll try to put uh, the Anglo Parts parts number uh, in the description and um, what before we're going to fit them I'm going to grease it a little bit put some grease here and on the seal as well seal in like this. We're also going to put a little bit of grease on all the mating surfaces. Like this. So now uh, I'll do the other side of the caliper and I'll show you when we're going to mate both the parts. So now both uh, caliper pistons and seals have been installed. Uh, it's time to mate both of uh, the halves together. And the holes that we're going to use are these. These are 5 8 uh, 2 inch long UNF bolts. They are a uh, grade S. This is what they use in periods. And um, the main problem with splitting the calipers is that because um, it says not to split the calipers. There are no uh, torque figures available for the bolts and uh, this is also where the problem came with uh, the other caliper that I did. Um, after my online research uh, I found out you're supposed to torque all the bolts to 35 foot-pounds. However, 35 foot-pounds for these um, 5 8 bolts is too much and uh, I knew that from the start but I thought if it worked for the other ones, it should work with me as well. But uh, the bolts broke off, and uh, one of uh, the bolts broke off in here, and there's a bit sticking out on this end. Uh, I was able to get it out, but this is what I had to do. This is the part that was still stuck in there, and this was the part that was exposed, and this is the end. So um, I just welded a part of the, the part that broke off on the end of it and then uh, I screwed it out but uh, it's not something that I want to repeat. Um, I think that there are quite a lot of different versions of the 14LF caliper, this, this one, um, that are out on the market and um, there are some with 3.8 bolts and some with 7.16 bolts. Mine has 5.16 bolts so um, I'm going to recommend that you do not torque these bolts to 35 foot-pounds. So um, I greased all of the calipers, all of the mounting surfaces. So we'll put them on. You can also see that without splitting the calipers, this is a really sucky job because you can't paint decently on the inside. It's really difficult to get all the new seals on so splitting them is the only reasonable thing to do so we'll put these on so now um, I'll screw these in and I'm going to torque them to something between 15 and 19 foot pounds and uh, hopefully um, this won't break the bolts but uh, we'll see how it goes and then we'll mount them to the car okay so I've torqued all the bolts to uh, 17 foot pounds and hopefully that will be enough now it's time to mount the caliper to the caliper bracket you need to use these special bolts, they have a really long shoulder and uh, I got these from Rope Engineering.
this is the original front brake line and the thing that I need from this, the thing that I want to recycle is this, this is a, an adapter that may, goes from a fitting like this from just a regular brake hose adapter to a banjo and I've been trying to find these everywhere but I couldn't and then I remembered that um, the, the front brake lines were still on the body and I went to get these off as you can see there's an adapter on here so we'll remove the adapter as you can see it's really dirty and looks terrible but it's brass and as you know brass can clean up quite nicely because it doesn't really corrode this is the one on the other side of the car and I cleaned this up using a brass wire brush and also metal polish so this is what we're going to use to go from a straight end fitting on a brake line to a banjo with the new brake lines but just using the original converters from brake line to banjo. Now I'll just have to clean this one up and it will look just as good as the other one. I've got new brass bleed nipples, these are the extra long ones so they definitely fit and of course a new rubber cap. We're also going to do something that they didn't do in the factory but something that's quite important uh, in my eyes and that's centering the brake caliper on the brake disc as you can see there's a lot more room on this side of the brake disc than there is on this side and you can even hear it uh, rub against uh, the brake pad a little bit so now um, I'm going to take some of these these are uh, shim washers they're uh, 7 16 for these bolts so um, these are half a millimeter thick each so we're going to um, try and stack a couple of these between um, the brake caliper and the brake caliper bracket so right between this and then we can uh, space the caliper a little bit better on the brake disc so the first thing to do is to take the brake caliper off okay so now we have the caliper off and my guess is that we'll need at least two shims so we're going to try with two shims and then um, we'll take a look at what the clearances are now. So as you can see, it's a little bit better but it's still hitting. So now it's properly shimmed and as you can hear, the brake pads don't touch anymore. And what I ended up doing is using one shim, so half a millimeter uh, spaced towards the inside and I removed these anti-squeal shims from um, the brake pads because this made the brake pads too thick and they were always touching the brake disc a little bit. So today the final piece of the puzzle for the front brake uh, system has arrived. This is it, a new stainless steel banjo bolt and two copper crush washers. So we'll assemble these and we'll take um, the banjo converter that I got from the old brake hoses put the crush washers on feed the line in so and then when we tighten this and um, the banjo can move while the steering articulates um, this is the new front brake system, so reconditioned calipers with stainless steel pistons, operated uh, brake pads, new discs, uh, new bolts, new seals, new bleed valve, new banjo, reconditioned uh, banjo converter and a new stainless steel braided line. It's the end of this video, I hope you enjoyed it. With the addition of the front brake calipers to the front suspension assembly, that part of the restoration is completely finished and we can start on the next thing. I'm not quite sure what that will be, but uh, you'll find out in the next videos. In the meantime, you can also read up on all the work that I did on my car on my website. And there's a completely written explanation and a lot of photographs. You can also subscribe to this channel so you won't miss the next videos. And uh, I hope I'll see you next time. Goodbye.